Hey guys, welcome to Kids Church Live. I'm Miss Amy and with me today as always are my kids, Ava and Nora. I miss all of you. I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and helping out mom and dad. And I also hope that you had a fun 4th of July since 4th of July was yesterday. But remember, don't play with fire or, or fireworks because that could be uh, really bad. And all right, illegal. and illegal, that's right. This is our 17th episode. And now it's time for Ask Miss Amy. All right, today's question comes from our friend Jalen. What does it say? Miss Amy, can you go? to my house for a movie night from Jalen. Oh, I love this question, Jalen. Thank you so much for inviting us. And I thought that your question would open up a bigger conversation about how to socialize during quarantine because we're still in coronavirus. We're not supposed to have big parties and stuff like that. But if you're like us, you're probably missing your friends about now. So a couple ideas that I had was if you wanted to do a movie night, you could do an outdoor movie night where you project the movie onto a wall and then everybody's able to safely social distance um, and watch the movie together. Nora, what was your idea? Um, can you say it? <laughs> Nora's idea was to do a Zoom movie night where you both watch the same movie in your own houses, but then you guys can talk about it and you keep Zoom on the whole time and it's kind of like watching the movie together. What do you think, Ave? Well, that sounds fantastic. Yeah? Yeah, um, and maybe uh, if you don't if you don't have a big enough wall, you can just like put uh, a sheet down on your garage and use your projector. Oh yeah, that's another good idea on how to project your your movie outside, right? And then, like you can also do it inside, except like with one family. Yeah, like, that's one true. One friend, you choose one friend. One to come friend, over, yeah. And you just sit down and watch a movie. Right. Yeah. Well, and also, it's always important to ask mom and dad what their advice is, right, and what they feel comfortable with, because that's going to vary from family to family, and it's important to check with each other to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page with what's safe and what's not safe. All right, and as always, if you have a question that you would like to be answered on future episodes, you can email that to me at amy at sdchurch.com. All right, last week we discovered a story of Moses asking the Pharaoh to let his people go, if you guys remember that one. Uh, and how many, let's see, here's a challenge, how many of the plagues can you remember? Um, there was flies, frogs, boils, um, oh, death of the first child, uh, for, yep, firstborn of the firstborn, son. right. Um, what else, Nora, can you remember any? Wait, wait, I think I remember one. Darkness? Yeah, darkness. darkness. Good job, darkness. Norse. Oh, oh, death of the livestock. Death of the livestock, the Egyptian uh, livestock. Oh, and then uh, water turned to blood. Water turned to blood. That's right. That was pretty good. You guys together. Did you get really all of them? I don't know. I didn't keep track. But <laughs> if you don't remember at home, that's okay because we are going to go over our story together. And today's story, we're actually going to learn about the first Passover. So our story takes place when there was one last plague. God tells Moses how to prepare the Jewish people so they don't have the same thing happen to them. They were to find a perfect male lamb or goat, which was only one year old. God tells them how to place the blood of the lamb on the doorposts of their home so the firstborn animal and child will be saved and not have to die. Today, we will learn about the first Passover. So you know what to do. Gather your sisters and brothers, mom and dad, whoever you're with, and we are going to get together and read this story and do our response questions together. Remember to press pause as we do our response questions so you can answer them at home. And today's Bible story takes place in Exodus 12, 21 through 30. And I'll read it to you today. All right, in verse 21, then Moses called all the elders of Israel together and said to them, go pick out a lamb or young goat for each of your families and slaughter the Passover animal. Drain the blood into a basin, then take a bundle of hyssop branches and dip it into the blood. Brush the hyssop across the top and sides of your door frames of your houses, and no one may go out through the door until morning. For the Lord will pass through the land and strike down the Egyptians. 
But when the Lord, when he sees the blood on the top and sides of the door frame, the Lord will pass over your home. He will not permit his death angel to enter your house and strike you down. Remember, these instructions are a permanent law that you and your descendants must observe forever. When you enter the land the Lord had promised you, you will continue to observe this ceremony. When your children ask, what does the ceremony mean? You will reply, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord, for he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt. And though he struck the Egyptians, he spared our families. When Moses had finished speaking, all of the people bowed down to the ground and worshiped. So the people of Israel did just as the Lord had commanded through Moses and Aaron. And that night at midnight, the Lord struck down all of the firstborn sons in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn son of Pharaoh, who sat on the throne, to the firstborn son of the prisoner in the dungeon. Even the firstborn of their livestock were killed. Pharaoh and all of his officials and all of the people of Egypt woke up during the night, and loud wailing was heard throughout the land of Egypt. There was not a single house where someone had not died. Wow, that is a big story. Oh my gosh. I it's like, pretty crazy. I was like wide-eyed during it. I was like, what is happening? There's I know. so much blood and there, so much death. There was a lot of instruction there, though, as well. Um, and they, God did as he said. He was faithful to his promise to spare all of the Israelite families who um, made this sacrifice. Uh, so probably that was... all of them did because they're like, nope, not, uh, <laughs> yes. not gonna let anybody die at my house. Well, I think once Moses and Aaron explained to them what to do, they're probably, you know, running home. <laughs> yes, yes, and they're it like, says that they even worshipped, right? Yeah, they're like, okay, let's uh, worship at our house <laughs> and um, save our children. <laughs> <laughs> right, save our children. All right, Nora, do you want to read this first story? What? Wait, what if they they didn't have any children? Oh, that's a good question. Well, I don't know. Maybe they still did it anyway because it said that the, the first of their livestock were also killed. So maybe they didn't. What okay. did you like or dislike about this story? What did you like or dislike about this story? Um, I, did, I disliked the death and blood. The death and blood. Usually that's a hard like part. it's miracles and um, happiness. And now it's like death and blood. Well, I think this story is important because it's kind of foreshadowing what Jesus did for us, right? We deserve death uh, because of our sin, and Jesus was the lamb that saved us. So really, this is foreshadowing once again what Jesus did for us, which was die for our sins. So the penalty for sin is death, and also in order, it's like a life for a life. In order for their firstborn not to die, they had to sacrifice the life of a, a young animal, which can be kind of gruesome, but that's how it is. It was just a baby. <laughs> yes, that is true. What did you like about this story? Oh, I liked it when everybody lived. When, <laughs> when the sons lived because yeah. they did the Wait, sacrifice? what about girls? What about the female girls? Like it's firstborn, so, well, it says firstborn son, so I'm I'll not be, exactly sure. Five feet five? <laughs> Maybe, I'm not sure. But we would do it anyway, right? Just to make sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was just thinking about so many. Uh, Nora, was friends. there anything that you liked about this story? Mm. Or disliked? Mm. Um, I was just. All right. I was okay. just thinking that, like, if it happened right now, like, how many people, like, how many of my friends and friends' big brothers mm -hmm. and sisters, maybe? Yeah. Who knows? Would like die. Yeah. Ava, do you want to read number two? Um, what might they have God been teaching you or showing you, showing the characters in this story? What might God have been teaching or showing the characters in this story? What do you think that God was teaching or showing the characters? That if you obey, no one will die. Yeah, yeah. If you <laughs> obey, yep. No one will die. Right. And yeah, I think that's a good lesson. Right? Trust um, and obey. Oh, and that, that he is the lamb. That, that he is the himself. lamb. Yeah, he, it was the foreshadowing of Jesus that the lamb would come later on. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Very it's true. Like the goat came for, uh, like the ram for um, Isaac. Yeah. Or, yeah, the ram replaced Isaac. 
right? Yeah. As the sacrifice. God replaced us. Yeah, Jesus replaced us. That's right. Yeah, Blair very good. replaced the firstborn son. Yeah, we see a lot of that, uh, of that symbolism, foreshadowing, uh, in different stories. Even in the story of Adam and Eve during the fall, it says that God provided them with animal clothes as they left the garden, meaning that there had to be an animal sacrifice because of their sin. So we see that a sacrifice also took the place of their sin too. It's kind of like almost uh, to simplify it a little bit, like a checks and balance system. That... Nora, you want to read number three? The people worship God. Why do you think they worship God? So it says that in the passage that they worshiped God after they heard what Moses uh, told them, basically, about the sacrifice. Why do you think they worshiped God? Um, maybe because they were grateful that they had a way for their firstborn not to die. Yeah, I think that they were thankful, right? And that, that they wouldn't be slaves anymore. And that God made a way for their sons not to die. I think they were pretty thankful for that. Um, I know I would be thankful for I that. know, I know. It's like, thank heavens. Right. You don't have to die, Johnny. Right, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. You don't have to die. All right. All right, Ava, you want to read number four here? <sighs> I learned that God is blank. Today, uh, today, today, I learned that God is blank. What is a characteristic of God that you learned today? What do you today, think? Um, resourceful. Resourceful? Yeah, because oh, he what do you mean? the resources. Like, he's like, oh, uh, so he looked around and he saw the lamb. He's like, oh, you have to kill the lamb. Okay. Um, And then, like, you put it on your door. Mm, okay. All and right. Then, yeah. So he used the things that they already had yeah. access to? Yes. Oh, that's very interesting. He used what was available. Yeah, that's true. And he made it so it wasn't super difficult, I guess. Mm -hmm. Right? Like they didn't have to go out and find these things. These were things that were readily available. That's very interesting. Hmm. I think that's good. I wouldn't have thought of that. That was really good. And Nora, you said amazing. Why did you say amazing? Because he's amazing. Because he's amazing. I think that this story reminds me of God's faithfulness. That God yeah. will do what he says he's going to do. And I think uh -huh. that's an important piece. Oh, and Oh, and he loves his people so much, he can literally do anything. That's true. He really loves his people. He's loving. I would say mm -hmm. today I learned that God is loving. I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I love that. All right. Nora, do you want to read this next one? Or should I have Ava read it? Have me read it. I'll read it. Okay. okay. Number five. How would you, how would you want God to protect you right now? How would you want God to protect you right now? Uh, ooh, I don't know. Maybe for him to tell me something like, like kind of just give me sense so that I could control my body. Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. Because, um, to protect you from myself. Uncontrol, like self uncontrol, yeah, I guess. Like right? that. Yeah. Yeah. To, uh, keep me in control of my body. Help you with self control. Yeah, I think that's really good. That's, that is a way of protection. What about you, Nora? How do you need God to protect you right now? I'm just going to whisper because the other people won't hear. Them. Okay. Mm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right. What about from something going on right now? What about like from COVID? COVID. Yeah, yeah. COVID. We can always ask God for protection from anything, even COVID or things that we're scared Lord of. Lord Jesus, will you please stop COVID? Right. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Uh, yeah. Praise. I agree with that. All right. Abe, you want to read this last one? Yeah. Share what you need prayer for and pray together now. All right. Our favorite, share what you need prayer for and pray together now. If you have specific prayers that I can pray for you about, please send those to me at amy at sdchurch.com. Also, make sure that you guys keep sending me your art submissions and questions that you would like answered on future episodes. I love getting those. And I love you guys. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.